So with 3.4 approaching in about a week or so, I'm just really excited for it and wanted to talk about it with you guys for a bit. Talk about the banners, the events, the actual lantern ride itself, Yao Yao, and what are your guys' plans going into it? Now, first things first, having some time to go back and watch the trailer again and really catch the little details and whatnot. I love this trailer so much because it was just actually like finally a good and uplifting moment for Genshin because as people know, <laughs> Genshin is a very sad game. Like when you look into the story and you actually take the time to read what happens in these events and whatnot, it usually ends up being pretty sad most of the time. But in this case, it was finally a event where everybody was happy for the most part until the second half of the trailer started, but it's back to the celebration. Everybody comes back together. It's always refreshing to me to see a bunch of characters of a region all come together. And it'd be even more so to see characters from different regions come together as well. But I can't lie, that's always a satisfying moment for me just to see a bunch of playable characters come together and it be about them. And speaking of characters, my God, has it been forever since we've seen Hu Tao in anything at all. I'm not talking about just the banners, I'm referring to Hu Tao's character involvement period within the story. Hu Tao has had more involvement in collabs, phones, t-shirts, and accessories than she's ever had in the actual game. So it really did put a smile on my face to actually see Hu Tao in the story, but actually have the story be about Hu Tao, and that's the big difference here. She may be a part of the Moon Chase Festival or Lantern Rite sometimes, but in this case, she's actually on the cover of the event for the splash art, and supposedly it seems to be about her. Like, the main focus is kind of on her. It's the whole Lantern Rite, but it's kind of on her. The trailer begins with Hu Tao actually speaking, and it was already kind of jarring because, you know, I just never hear that voice ever in the game. So it was already jarring to hear that. And personally, as a very, very late player in Genshin, I started around like 2.4, 2.5. I never really got a chance to see Hu Tao or even know who she was. Not to mention she didn't even get like an actual initial trailer at the right time because of the whole, you know, Chinese taboo situation with death and whatnot. So she kind of had a rough start. But anyways, my point is I never really got to be introduced to Hu Tao or really know who she was. But luckily there was a story quest for her that was available to be played at any time. And once I played that story quest, it really made me love the character so much more because I kind of knew her very, very vaguely as just like the scary girl, you know, but after playing the story quest, you really get an understanding of who the character really is and you get to see things from her perspective. And I love that because after you play the quest, you understand, oh, she's really not what everybody just makes her out to be. There's a reason why she does the things that she does. And in that moment, she became a very lovable character for me. And that's when I just kind of already wished, man, I wish she was in more content. And here we are, she's freaking jumping on stage, like just like pumping the crowd, like dancing with Zinya. Like that scene is just like, like I said, to never see this character for like a whole year and then just kind of come out the gate like this. Like it was just like, you know, look at her having fun, you know, not just locked up in the funeral parlor doing her thing, actually kind of doing something different and having fun. And once again, as a very, very late Genshin player, this is my first time actually experiencing Lantern Rite. So it's my first Lantern Rite. And I went back to watch the old cutscenes and whatnot just to kind of catch up, but it's not the same experience as actually, you know, experiencing it yourself. So I'm very excited to see like what happens this time. It is the third time they're doing this now. And, uh, you know, can Zhao actually fully be a part of it? You know, what's going to happen with Yelan now that she's a part of the crew? How is it going to pan out when it comes to Hu Tao? Is this actually going to be, is it really going to be about her? Is Zinian finally going to be able to do the Iridescence tour like around to that? Because she's doing it here in Li Wei at the moment, but the Iridescence tour is supposed to be like all over to that. So she's trying to go, you know, like on a tour, you know, like go around the world. So I hope she manages to do that. Also, Venti actually is supposed to be there this time. And to my knowledge, I not, don't believe that Venti was there any other time, but this is like one of those rare occasions where we get to see a character from a different region show up to another region. So to see Venti there and to hear his voice in that trailer, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. What's, you know, what's going on here? But I really, really, really hoping for like a Venti and Zhongli scene or like, you know, Archon's me again. Um, or just any like drunk venti scene or just venti being venti essentially. But with that, we could not forget to talk about Yao Yao. Yao Yao has been talked about and also I think in the beta, one of the first betas for Genshin in the very beginning and she's just been sitting there in the air for so long and now she's finally, finally becoming a playable character and actually involved in the events. 
So I'm very curious to see how Yao Yao is going to react with the rest of the group, especially Shang Ling, because they're kind of have like a, there's kind of a junior senior relationship there. Um, I thought that they were actually like sisters, but that's not actually the case. It's more of a junior senior type of thing. But it seems like Yao Yao is the more mature one in comparison, but we'll just have to see. And with Yao Yao finally being free, she's actually playable as well, and she'll be on the very first banner for 3.4. And from the live stream, it looks like she's supposed to be a healer, and I'm hoping that she's like a really good one, like she can heal by a lot, because that's the one thing we were missing when it comes to Dendro, is a Dendro healer. So I'm glad that she actually will fill that role, and I am looking for more utility when it comes to Dendro, so I'm actually really excited more for Yao Yao than I am Alhatham. And also, she's the first like small little chibi character that actually has a polearm, so... You're gonna get like brand new animations that you haven't seen before because there's not a single character that actually has a pole arm that's like Sayu or Klee. So that's also pretty cool too. My one fear for her is that she looks like she has to be on the field to really like make her bunnies like jump out and actually do what they do. But I'm hoping that's not gonna be the case too much, but we will have to see when she comes out. Either way, I'm very excited about Yao Yao, even more so than Alhatham. Speaking of Alhatham himself, he's finally here. Very, very odd timing, I'll say. Uh, I did not think he was going to come out during a Lantern Rite festival. Now, he appears to be a, like, spread DPS, and he looks a lot like a Ching with his animations and his playstyle. But after his teaser came out, they actually put out a lot more animations for us to see, and I kind of take back the whole Kaching thing at this point. He's more like a melee Tainari. That's the way I think about him. He's like Tainari, but if he was melee. So I think it's different enough where he's his own character. Obviously, I don't blame anybody for making that comparison to Kaching, because, I mean, you know, the skill and the burst kind of flashing around like that does look very similar. But any, at the end of the day, I do feel like it's different enough, and his animations look a bit cooler. And he has AoE, which is something that Kaching doesn't really have too much, at least with his skill, kind of, but... I think this one goes very, very wide, which is nice. But we also have the banners to talk about as well, and the banners are looking pretty stacked this time around. At least for me, when it comes to the second half, it's a lot more stacked, but the first half's not bad either. You have Alhatham, Zhao, and then Yao Yao is actually going to join them on that first banner. Now, I will say, Zhao has been here an awful lot. Now, he was here, I think, early 2022, and then again for his own event in 2.7 with Yalon. And now he's here again for Lantern Rite. So he's been here a lot of times. If you haven't had a chance to go ahead and grab Zhao or like his cons or his weapon, I mean, you have plenty of time to do it. And I don't think he'll be gone again soon. He might just come back again because he seems to be a very popular choice when it comes to Hyoverse, at least. But of course, right alongside him is Alhatham, a brand new character. Of course, not really fitting in the whole Lee Away type of deal, but he's there, he's new. So he within the eyes of the community as of now, not too many people are all that excited for him. They are, but in terms of like what they saw through the live stream, this kit, he doesn't seem to be anything like mind breaking or like anything crazy, but I think he'll definitely be fun and definitely have to give him a try, you know? Definitely just wait and see before you pull on that banner. But I think his banners will do pretty well in terms of sales and whatnot because, you know, new character, I'll hate them, Giga Chad. I mean, just look at him, look at him. Alongside that, their weapons, and it's gonna be Alhatham's brand new sword, which his weapon is crit damage. It's one of the crazy crit damage weapons. It's 88% crit damage. So definitely gonna be pretty cool and wacky if you actually pull it, because you can actually put it on different characters and just have a massive crit damage boost. And then this is where people are kind of eh, not really too happy about this, but it's the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, which is a great weapon, but it is worth mentioning this weapon is also on the standard banner. So it's not a limited weapon which means you can kind of get it anytime. The chances of you getting it on center banner are very low, but you could get it possibly. Now moving on to the second half of the banner, this is the one that I'm actually super excited about. It is Hu Tao and Yelan, like two powerhouses, like just aesthetically pleasing, just red and blue. And there's just something about the Staff of Homa, like that track record on Staff of Homa is ridiculous. It's a Wolf's Gravestone, LG for the end, and now it's Aqua Simulacra. Both weapons are crit damage weapons, and they're just, they're really great for HP scalers, but also just in general, because they are crit damage weapons. So while this may be the scam banner, as it's known to be, this weapon banner may be worth your primo gems, I'm not gonna lie. If you don't have Staff of Homer already, and then you don't have Aqua Simulacra, 
honestly, you really can't go wrong with getting either one of these weapons unless you really, really want one specifically. But aside from that, you have Hu Tao, which you guys are all familiar with her at this point. She's been around for a long time now. If you already have Hu Tao, you're probably looking more towards Yelan. And if you already have Yelan and you're a late player like me, you're looking more for Hu Tao. But overall, generally speaking, I think we can all say that the second half of this banner is stacked. You have Hu Tao, Yelan, two powerhouses. You have Staff of Homa and Aqua Sigma Lacra two powerhouse weapons. The only thing that we still have left to see are the four stars on the banner and the four star weapons. That'll be like the make or break, like if this is like one of the best banners ever had. That matters very much so. I'm hoping that they give us like the Xing Chou, uh, Shang Ling treatment and then like some other character at the end. But we will see, that's what matters going forward. Maybe like some good four star weapons, like sacrificial weapons, something like that, that'd be nice. They actually might give us a lot of like leeway series weapons too, which actually may not be good. I'm assuming we'll see a lithic spear there because it's leeway. And also not to mention the actual events of the Lantern Rite. We have a one that kind of looks like a web event, I'm not gonna lie. It's just like a puzzle one where the guy moves on his own, but you have to control the environment behind him. So you have to make sure that he gets to the goal. Could be interesting, but I'm not gonna lie, it does look like it's like a web event or like something that you'd see somewhere else, like a flash game or something. Doesn't seem like it'd be like a full on event, but sometimes there are puzzles as events, so I guess this is one of them. Then we have the almighty Arataki extraordinary and exhilarating extreme beetle brawl. That's a handful. Of course, that's an Arataki Ido event, and this one's probably the one I'm probably most excited about, probably I say second to the second bloom. But this one is basically just like a literal street fighter battle of like two Oni Kabuto fighting. And it's just very comical when you see it for the first time. But we, I, I just love when things that get talked about in Genshin actually become playable. Like for example, TCG. And of course, here we go with the beetle battle. So Ido's always talking about fighting with his beetles and now we actually get to fight with the beetles. And usually Ido's events are actually pretty fun. So I'm glad this is another one being added to his arsenal. And then we have Warrior's Spirit, which is actually a pretty fun one. It's the parry event. And I don't know if you guys like this one, but I definitely enjoyed it from the last time with the Iridoi Festival, I believe. We had that kind of like parry system. And I actually found it to be pretty fun. It's like a whole kind of different mechanic for Genshin when it comes to fighting. And you're usually defaulted to the Traveler and you end up just fighting like various NPCs, various enemies. And I just, I really want to see how it turns out with Ayaka. Like, how does she get her skin? Why does she get her skin? Does she just want to change outfits, you know? I know she wanted to a long time ago on the quest, but now she finally got her new outfit. Unfortunately though, we didn't get one ourselves. But anywho, I'm looking forward to see how this event unfolds when it comes to Ayaka. Are we going to fight Ayaka? Like, are we going to spar with her? That would be like the sickest thing, I swear. If we get to actually spar with Ayaka, I'd be excited. Probably not gonna happen, it might just be the NPCs. Hopefully we see like another, you know, do battle dog, that'd be cool. But pretty excited for that one. Once again, very simplistic, but kind of a cool like little parry system. I do enjoy that. And speaking of skins, then we have the Lisa skin. The Lisa skin is just like, I'm sorry, the Lisa skin outdoes the Ayaka one. I love the Ayaka one, I do. It's very like fancy Fontaine-like, but like, Lisa's just killed it, she killed it. But however, this event is called Second Bloom and it's also another combat event. So we get two combat events this time and you also get to play a bunch of different characters, but some have to actually be switched off and some can be brought to the next stage. And also too, I didn't even notice this actually, but Alhatham is in as a trial character. So you can actually try out Alhatham. I hope this event is gonna be like in the first half, hopefully, but you can actually try out Alhatham with your characters and really get a feel for how he plays and how he would work with your teams because you can actually play him with your own characters. And then for the actual Lantern right, there is the Exquisite Night Chimes, which is like it's the actual event or the actual like sort of focus. And I think through this, you do like the parkour thing where you're like a firework and you go to different areas and whatnot and pick up balloons and see the fireworks go off. So I think that's what this is behind. And also the first thing I mentioned with the puzzle, I think that is also part of this as well. So this has various puzzles and various like events in it itself. And then there's the other three that I mentioned. And once you play those events and you finish them up, I assume, then you will get your fortuitous invitation. You get to pick from Beidou, Chongyu, Ningguang, Shangling, Xinyan, Xingqiu, Yanfei, Yunjin, and then of course, honestly, pretty shocking to me, Yao Yao. So they actually put the brand new character in there as well 
so you can pick one for free of your choice. Let me know in the comments who you are gonna be getting for free. Like, do you have any specific character? Like, maybe like a Beidou Khan, a Chong Yun Khan even? Need Shang Ling still? Like, who's gonna be your four star pick? But also with that being said, what are your plans when it comes to the banners as well? Who are you trying to go for? Who do you have your wishes saved up for? I know people have been saving for a countless amount of time for Hu Tao. I know people have been saving for the little time we've had since Yilan's last uh, initial banner release. So who are you going for? Are you actually trying to get your Zhao? Are you going for the brand new Alhatham? And I already know people are literally foaming out the mouth for the second half of the banner. But if I could recommend any banner, I would definitely recommend the second one. Um, the weapons are great, but honestly, I'd recommend getting a character first, if anything. But who are you going for? Who are you saving up for? Who do you have everything prepared for? Because you can definitely do it. We have about like a week and a half from the time of this video. It'll be January 18th, I believe the patch will be available for. It might be 17th if you're in Asia the day before. That's when we get to Alhatham and Zhao's banner. That's the first half with a Yao Yao. And then later on, 20 days later, we'll get Hu Tao and Yelan. Now, I was so excited about the Lantern Rite, I actually totally forgot about the other half of the content. We actually might see some more like Goddess of the Flowers area. We're seeing a brand new desert area with some more like hazardous sort of situations going on. I'm not sure what that means. But then we also have a brand new boss, an Animo like Ruin Serpent. And that is going to be so much fun. Didn't you guys love the Ruin Serpent from before? My goodness, I'm not excited about that. But hopefully it doesn't come to the abyss anytime soon, because my goodness. But we'll see what it does. Hopefully it doesn't just burrow underground and sit there for three years. But also with that being said, we have the like just fan. Ah, I don't even know how to. Like, once again, the airbrush just looks so sick. Like, they look so good, too. Like, their skills, they have, like, all these sick animations with, like, you know, elemental infused weapons. And then this new one actually can, like, summon a firebird. Like, just ridiculous. The other one is Dendro, and she has, like, these Dendro discs that, like, I think home attack onto you. So, very interesting new enemies. It's also, like, super refreshing to me when there's new enemies in the game because it allows for just, like, a, a little fresh... Refresh if I should say that but and last but not least is also the goddess of flowers area Which looks like it may or may not be a domain. I'm not sure Hopefully it's not a domain, but it looks like they were like kind of frozen in time So it might be a domain, but I'm hoping it's not and we actually maybe get to get a little tease into getting that area of the goddess of flowers But maybe we will maybe we won't we'll see but that'll wrap things up for me I'm super excited for 3.4 and I'm ready. I'm ready 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 for Hu Tao I've been waiting for Hu Tao for so long but I'm also eager to try out Al Haytham. So I'm excited. Once again, let me know what you guys think about it coming up. What are you gonna wish for? What are you planning on? What are your plans? Who's your free four star for Liyue? But that'll be all for me. I wish you guys a happy new year once again, and I will see you guys soon.